This is where the decision's made. This is where you decide if you're going to get it today or you're going to wait till tomorrow. Go hit that snooze button you're going to get your ass out of bed. Where's it going to be? You're going to hit that snooze button or go and get your ass out of bed. So hello and welcome to another video. Yes, I'm smiling. We are back at Rosemere. Now I arrived at first light this morning and I arrived to quite a chilly morning as well. It's quite obvious that autumn is well and truly here. Uh, and the news around the lake is it's fishing rather tricky. You know, the fish are behaving a lot differently. Since arriving this morning, you know, it's taken me a good few hours to make my mind up where I'm actually gonna pitch up. Uh, and that's for one reason and that is the fish are hiding i'm not seeing signs of feeding or anything like that uh, it's monday morning now uh, and the weekend anglers that have been on there's been two fish caught over the weekend and one lost fish that i know about uh, and in particular the swim that i've chosen to fish uh, it has not done very well i might add um, there was a guy in friday and saturday night he didn't have anything and then there was also a guy in here last night but he moved early this morning over into the lunar swim um, so you know it doesn't look great but you know after what I seen on my last session down here I was fishing Midwest which is the next swim along to the right uh, and I've got my own opinions of this swim uh, and I really do feel confident we can at least winkle a bite out long as the fish are obliging um, I do think I'm gonna have to address the amount of bait that I've been putting in I've been putting in a lot of bait on my previous sessions but I don't think it warrants it this time but you know we'll have to play that by ear um, I'm gonna start off softly uh, that's one thing I am gonna say um, but for now you know I've got my own like I said I've got my own take on this swim uh, and I'll go through that in more detail but from what I've noticed in general uh, there's certainly one area of this swim that gets fished more than others uh, and it's not been very productive and I do think them fish you know they do relate that area to danger as certainly that's the way it's coming across to me uh, and you know you've got to put your bit of common sense into your angling or that's what I do anyway I look at things in, you know with that perspective uh, and it always seems to uh, do well for me uh, and that is how I am going to approach this swim you know most of the time people would look at this and think god it's seen two anglers off it's not done a bite but one thing I do know is uh, my mate Stuart who I was talking to this morning he said his mate was in here on the Friday and Saturday night and he was having a few liners but didn't pick up any fish so you know that says a lot um, 
so yes I'm waffling on I'm gonna get these rods fishing uh, I've got a couple of areas marked out in my brain which I'd like to fish and I'll speak about them why I want to choose why I'm gonna choose them uh, it depends if I can find a you know a presentable spot there first and then we'll talk about why and it does relate a lot back to my previous session in the Midwest as to why I want to be here and I do believe you know there's a good number of fish that get in here the which go under under the radar so to speak of but anyhow that is it let's get going wish me luck the next time i see you them rods will be out there fishing There you go look the rods are out there and we are fishing 
I'm feeling quite comfortable despite this weather. It really is a bit pants at the moment, but we'll touch on that in more detail shortly. For now, I want to talk about what just happened. I was still getting the spots marked out. I was just wrapping up and that, and Gareth come running down the bank. Paul, 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 I need your help, I need your help. Anyways, I gets down there, and he's only gone and banked Harris at just over £60. £60 and 7 ounces he was. And he looked absolutely colossal. Such a mega fish. And it was an absolute pleasure to do the pictures for Gareth, and to see his reaction to the capture as well you know although I, I can't help but feel a little bit deflated because I did feel like he was going to come out and I knew he was going to be over 60 pound I just knew it um, but I'm sure he'll grace my rods at some point and for now you know there's still plenty of chunks out there for me to go for uh, and it's all about the journey isn't it if I, if I was to catch Harris now it'd be game over really wouldn't it and there's so many beautiful big fish in here that I want to catch first so yes as I mentioned this weather at the moment I mean it looks absolutely mad for it and if I was sat on a certain few lakes right now I'd be sat rubbing my hands thinking anytime you know in for a session of a lifetime sort of thing you know autumn time this time of year uh, stormy conditions low pressure i've had some really good hits of fish uh, on them conditions but it's just not the one in here if anything it really does seem to have the opposite effect I mean the pressure's right down into the 990s at the moment uh, and the temperature's quite consistent as well it's sort of hovering around 12 and 14 degrees through the daytime and no real sudden ups and downs which is what you want really them sudden ups and downs you know it can really put them off especially in shallow water which which is what we've got out there you know we're sort of fishing in an average of four to five foot deep so you know them changing temperatures really do uh, uh, change things dramatically on here so if you've got that constant temperature you know with no sudden ups and downs you know it really does make me feel confident of a bite or two the only bad thing is is every time I've been when it rains it really does knock it on the head um, so we'll just have to see it is going to get better uh, going into tomorrow you know the rain's going to hold off um, but we're still going to have the conditions you know overcast and we're still going to have a low pressure so I'll be quite interested to see what that does on the old fishing front um, but it really is looking like a different lake I am still yet to see any signs of fish feeding uh, and the lads at the weekend you know it's, it's not fished its head off um, I'm not sure how many guys was on but Stuart was telling me you know only a couple of fish come out uh, he had one of them and then uh, Brian had one out the cherries uh, and then there was another fish lost and then obviously Gareth has just had um, just had the big one and he so you know it's not fishing its head off and armed with that information from Stuart and obviously relating back to what I'm actually seeing it has made me hold off on the bait a bit I mean the past few sessions I've been coming down I've been putting a hell of a lot of bait in uh, in particular I've been starting off with at least 10 kilos of bait to begin with over three rods uh, and on this session I've actually only gone out with six kilos over three rods so a couple of kilos over each spot I mean to some people that still might sound like a lot but it's not a lot not for these big fish that are in here um, but I didn't want to go too excessive uh, I still want a, a chance or an opportunity so to speak of and it only takes one fish to drift over with that amount of bait there because they really do snaffle it in here when they move across now I've not changed anything on the old bait situation the only difference is as I'm just holding back a little bit now I've got a mix of them um, and it's consists of 60% boilies and around 40% particle uh, and the one thing that I am doing is I'm uh, taking the boilies out the freezer I'm letting them thaw out in a bucket and then once they're thawed out you know I'm putting uh, hot kettle water totally submerged 
submerge the boilers and I'll leave them for 24 hours and then I drain that water off and then I add the particle into the mix and the particle that I'm using it's the tier 1 mix from Monster and there's a few larger items in there I mentioned before there's yellow peas there's maize uh, I've even added maples into the mix as well uh, and there's lots and lots of tiny pieces of hemp in there the hemp that's in that mix is rather small hemp you know it's not this super sized stuff uh, and I rather like that because it clings to the boilies when they become sticky and not only that it really does get the spot active in my opinion there's a lot of rudder roach in here and I like to use them to my advantage and they really do start bouncing off the spot after I've baited up and if anything I quite like that carp are quite very inquisitive the way I look at it uh, and if you've got a load of roach and mud and that all you know smashing up your spot and generating a lot of activity in the area how can a carp swim past that and not come to investigate that's my opinion on it anyway and it certainly makes me feel confident doing that and a 60-40 mix between the two you know there's still plenty of big boilies out there for them to go at and them nuisance fish can't pick them off now I am still going out there on the same rigs as last time and I am still using the snowman presentation 15mm LM94 bottom bait tipped off with a 12mm pineapple and banana it's been working for me that and I've got a lot of confidence in that I have changed one thing slightly on the old rig front I did mention in my other video that I had one of the hooks uh, slightly bend out on me after I'd played a fish in um, so I have switched hooks but we'll talk about that in more detail as to why and things like that i'll show you that up close and personal um, but for now you know i'm going to kick back and relax and see if we can't make something happen i mean if i'm looking at the conditions and what i know and things like that i really do feel like it'll be tomorrow afternoon when i'm sort of expectant of a bite but you just never know i've done my best i'm very happy with the spots and i will go through the spots uh, in a bit more detail once this rain stops uh, and I can show you the paths in the weed and that a little bit better and sort of that you know so I can sort of explain the reasons why I've gone about it and things like that but for now wish me luck and we shall have a catch up in the morning I think Well, good morning, and unfortunately, spirits are not high this morning. Not long after I spoke to you last night, the left hand rod was away. And when I say it was away, it was a really twitchy take. I mean, to be honest, I thought there was a bird or something that had gone over the line. Uh, and I stood and looked, realized it was a take. The rod tip was just bouncing, just a couple of bleeps on the bobbin. Oh, 
I lifted into it and the fish come straight up to the surface, rolled on the surface and then they all popped out. I was absolutely mortified, you know, ugh, that bad I couldn't even turn the camera on to speak to you last night. I was absolutely devastated. Now I know this water is brutal with the weed and everything and you, and you do expect to not land everything. But in that circumstance, you know, it was clear, you know, even where I was bringing it back to, it was all clear, uh, just a really finicky take. And obviously the hook hole just wasn't good enough. Absolutely mortified. It's still cutting me up now, especially when it's fishing tricky like it is, you know, every bite matters. Uh, and around the lake, it's still fairly busy. There's seven anglers on uh, and nobody has had another fish as far as I'm aware of that is. So, you know, back to the drawing board. I mean, my banker spot really is my right hand rod. If out of all the three spots that I've got, the left hand rod was the one I was least confident in. Um, but I'm gonna go through the spots next, uh, show you around the swim uh, and just sort of, you know, put my, my vision into what I'm actually doing so you can sort of understand. And I, I'm not surprised it has gone, but it was my least favorite of the three. Um, but that right hand rod that's the banker spot for me so I'm very very hopeful that something will happen on that now the dilemma now is do you put more bait out uh, and over the right hand too I'm definitely not going to put any more bait out but the rod where I've had the bite I am going to put a little bit of bait out not a lot I'm, I'm talking just six medium spawns of bait just to fresh the spot up I mean, it's beyond me how that fish even drifted in, uh, you know, and we've got to pick up without even having seen any signs, you know. It just goes to show how much everything's changing now. I mean, even when you look at the uh, roach and rud activity, normally I bait up and the spot's alive, they're bouncing all over the place, and I'm not even seeing that happening. Usually you see them topping all over and, you know, big shoals of rud on the surface, and you're not seeing that now, so, you know, it's definitely changed, 100%. Uh, and the carp are hiding, they're a lot harder to find now, a lot harder to spot, um, but Ken's just been round to see me uh, and he said that he's seen a couple of fish in the back of the reeds where I seen them yesterday. So they're still not too far away from me uh, and that's the reason why I've, I've picked the spots that I have. I've left the main channel clear so them fish can pass through in and out uh, and not even know that I'm here. Um, you know, and sort of fish short and let them come to me kind of thing. But anyway, let's run through them spots now. Now out there in front of me, you'll see a lot of weed up on the surface, especially out here. There's an abundance of weed there, a big raft of it that sort of runs across it. it, it you know, there's channels through it in certain parts, um, but in particular out towards that island, especially along this bit, it's like a little channel. It's a clear channel of the weed. Uh, and I do think the carp use that path. There is a little band of weed beyond it as well, but then it's sort of clear as it runs around the island. Definitely patrol routes now them fish that I am seeing out in them reeds and it's these reeds over here seeing them just on the opposite side now I reckon they come up them channels there and it comes through here and where my finger is now there's a big clear spot there and it's the most obvious spot to fish in this swim and to be honest everybody that I've seen fishing in this swim always puts a rod on that but I'm yet to see anybody catch off that spot and for me and especially the way I'm thinking I I think it really puts them fish on guard you know it's on their patrol path uh, and they're so used to seeing a line in there or some bait in there that they're just treating it with caution now there's a couple of black chickens floating about in the area and every time they've been down on that spot they're always coming up with boilies in the mouth you know so there's bait down there that's not getting eaten that's for sure I mean I don't know how many people have fished this swim you know prior to the weekend but there was a guy in here at the weekend and then you know there was a guy in here for a night before I got in the swim you know so there is going to be some bait out there um, so it, you know it's not an alarming thing or anything like that but the thing is it's like my left hand rod I'm actually fishing this uh, band of weed a hole in this band of weed here you can see it this band of weed here it's right up to them reeds you cannot get close to them reeds like i mentioned that's the closest you can get to them reeds um but i'll see if i can zoom in a little bit for you but you can see just here 
there's a little opening in the weed there and that's where I've had the bite from and that's the spot that I'm fishing it's not a very big spot it's probably about a foot three foot wide um, but it is a nice drop you know it's a good firm drop it's not silty or anything like that and with that abundance of weed you know you can just imagine them fish coming down that left hand tree line um, in and out them reeds you know it does look a good area uh, and it's just something different. I'm not 100% if you know if it's a known spot that or not, but certainly it's a spot that stands out to me, especially when you're leaving that channel clear. I just don't want to put them fish on edge. I don't want to stop them fish coming in and out them reeds because to me, they're quite happy to be over there at the moment. Now if we take a look to the right hand side of the swim, uh, and this is the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to be in here. The, the swim that's to the right of me next door is Midwest and that's where I was last time. Now all out to this uh, right hand side of me here, uh, in close, it's just a massive, massive weed bed. Uh, and there's little channels that come through it and there's little holes in it and things like that. But there's nowhere in amongst that area where you can actually present and the first place where you can present I mean I don't know how well this is going to pick this up but we'll give it a go you can sort of see this clear area here and it is actually a thinned out strip that comes all the way in um, and I'm fishing towards the back of it where you just see them little pinpricks popping up uh, that's where I'm fishing uh, and yet I am you can see where the weed fins out a bit further out where my finger is now and it comes through into that strip there and then that strip goes off that one goes round to the island and that one comes out in front of the weed that's in front of me so it's just an obvious patrol path and, and this bit here you know it's an obvious patrol path uh, so I've got one position there now I do know that that's a known spot that and I know people that's had a few bites off of that and in particular Harris has been off of that spot in the past as well um, so th this half the reason why I wanted to be in here that's my banker spot but then my middle rod you know people normally fish that channel with the middle rod uh, and I'm not doing that I'm actually fishing this this cut through here so I'm fishing it just about there where my finger is now sorry about that but I'm fishing it just about there so it's where the channel decides to split to go that way and split to go this way and I'm intercepting them there that's where I've positioned that one and again you know I mentioned I've not gone out with a lot of bait but if they're passing over there you've got to put a little bit of bait there enough to want to make them to stop because most of the time I think they're just coming through that area just to head over to the safe zone in them reeds let me just adjust the ISO so yeah that's the thought process behind what I was doing I mean a lot of it has to do with my last session down you know seeing the fish out to the right of me here in this weed and not being able to get anywhere near them for me this is the closest you can get to uh, actually fishing to them, for them fish that get in that weed bed unless you go in midwest and you fish right over but again you know anything you hook in that area you just know it's going to be a boat battle whereas I feel like you've got half a chance here because it's broken up this weed as it comes through this channel so you know it's all to play for i'm not as i mentioned i'm not going to put any more bait out over them two spots i might refresh the rigs just because the bottom bait might be slightly a bit too soft now um, but I'm definitely going to pop a little bit of bait over that left hand rod and then sit back and hopefully this afternoon a fish does grace our net. I'd be chuffed to bits if that happened because right now I really am feeling sorry for myself. I feel like I've put a lot of effort in, got the bite and lost it. You know what I mean? It, oh, it just makes me sick to my pit even just talking about it. Anyway, I need to stop droning on about this. We need to move on and look for that next bite. So wish me luck and we shall have a bit of a catch up in a bit.
Yes, get in. I am absolutely buzzing my nut off right now. It's around about the same time as yesterday, same spot, same rod. And I think I've got the biggest common in the lake. Uh, I'm not 100%, but I think there's only 130 common in here. And if that's correct, it's in my retainer. I'm absolutely pleased as punch, I really am. And I tell you something, this fish was not coming off at all. I struggled to get the hook out myself. So to go from losing a fish to then not, not being able to get the hook out, well, oh, sometimes, you know, your name's on them, innit? And sometimes it's not. And there you go, look. Autumn gold at its best. God, I'm so happy right now. I really am. Oh, I need to get that rod back out though, because I do think it is slim pickings. <coughs> and there's the other side, just pristine perfect this fish on both sides, not a single mark on him. And his mouth is immaculate. Oh, stunning, absolutely stunning. I am so happy. Let's slip him back and then we shall have a catch up in a bit. Ooh. to us past now since we had that fish and oh my god it's just been one of them sessions on it I'm sure we've all experienced this situation as anglers you know yesterday afternoon I was absolutely mortified after losing that fish you know I was still setting up when Harris come out and then you know I lost that fish in the afternoon and I went to bed feeling really sorry for myself uh, and then, you know, we'll get another chance and it is the biggest common in the lake. I've just been to and from in messages with Ben, the owner, uh, and it's a fish known as the Orange Mouth Common. Oh, I'm absolutely blown away. I just cannot get over how immaculate that fish was. Uh, and as well, uh, talking to Ben, he says to me, he says, Paul, you, you want to be privileged with that one, mate, because it doesn't come out very often. He says, you seem to be picking off a few of the rare ones. Uh, I mean, going back to the first fish that I landed out of here, that was a fish known as the shy one. Uh, you know, and some of these fish don't come out for a good couple of years between captures. So, you know, I am smiling from ear to ear at the moment. It certainly turned this session around. Uh, I mean, so much so, my phone's been going crackers, I haven't even had my tea yet, and well, darkness is well and truly set in. Um, but anyway, I got the rod back out there, and I did top up with a little bit more bait. I mean, you know, it's one of them, do you bait because the fish have been there, but I've had the bite, so I've obviously spooked the area. So I'm thinking, why not get a bit more, bit more bait out there? Uh, and I was kind of thinking to myself while I was sitting here thinking, I wonder if I'd have put a bit more bait in after I had the bite yesterday, if anything had have happened through the night or possibly in the morning. So, you know, I've got that bait out there and you never know, there could still be another opportunity. I mean, that right hand side, you know, that's the one I keep saying, that's the banker spot, that's the banker spot, but it'd be ace to have a bite off that in the morning before we go home, wouldn't it? But fingers crossed, if anything, I'm chuffed to bits. It's been a brilliant session once again. And I really do feel like, you know, this place is starting to shut down ready for the winter. Everything's changed. You know, there's a lot of good anglers on here, really good anglers, you know, and we're really scratching at the minute. We really are. Um, so, you know, just have to play it by ear and keep riding that uh, cloud, so to speak of. But for now, I'm gonna get some tea on and then I'm gonna hit the sack and we shall have a catch up in the morning.
Well, good morning, and what a beautiful morning it is too. I'm still smiling from here to here from that fish last night. Oh, it was just absolutely immaculate, and I'm chuffed to bits. And today the sun's out, it's glorious, and it's been a good start to the morning as well. I've seen one of the fish on the bank this morning, which I would dearly love to catch as well. I mean, what a video this is gonna be. Just take a look at this now. This is rested, mate, isn't it? Here we go. All right, okay, let me do a quick cool. video. There you go, mate. What you got there, mate? Twin scale, 50 pound 40. Well done, what a unit. All right, I've got to put it down. <sighs> quick, quick. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Oh. Well done, Al, mate, well done. Oh. I was only talking about this fish yesterday saying I'd love to catch it and not only that I'd love to see it as well so when Alan slipped the net under it and at a mega weight 50 pound 14 ounces he was sure enough to call me around and oh just to see it in the flesh it's definitely one that's on my hit list uh, and as the lake goes oh my god what a video I mean you know three of the lake's finest all rolled up into one Harris at just over 60 pounds twin scale at just over 50 pound and the lake record common I mean oh my god this lake it is just it, it's just amazing I love it here the atmosphere the vibe about the place and not only that, I find weed fishing exhilarating, you know, it's not for a lot of people, you know, I get a lot of messages and comments from you guys saying, flipping it, Paul, I couldn't fish there, it's a bit too weedy for me, but for me, it adds to that excitement, you know. I mean, it's hard enough to get the bite in the first place, and then you get the bite and you've got to keep hold of it, you know. It's really heart in the mouth stuff, and my legs are always trembling. I mean, I'm a gibbering wreck when I catch a fish anyway. I'm just so pleased, and I love the sport that much. You know, I just hope that comes across on the video, like like how, how it does to me, how I feel about carp fishing. And I think this session just about sums that up for me, you know. Highs and lows, we started off low, and then we lost the fish, and then we've had a real good fish and yet we've seen some absolute bangers along the way you know oh this just just about sums it up what carp fishing is to me i absolutely love this place uh, and i'm really enjoying my time here it's going to get harder no doubt you know we're moving into winter but oh my god am i looking forward to springtime i mean look at the weights of the fish now come springtime oh my god that is all i can say I, i'm just like i can't wait i'm sort of wishing my life away to get to spring already that's just how this place makes me feel now whilst we're on a high and we're talking about things like that it's good to talk about what else i've got going off in the background you know and it's all fishing related everything's fishing related in my life uh, and in particular you know a few of you all know that i do tutorials on the on the back burner sort of thing i don't want to make a business out of it it's nothing like that i don't do it for the money it's purely for the love and the passion and i received a message last week from eric now eric you know He's just a really nice guy and I really enjoyed that tutorial with him. Uh, and in particular, it was the first tutorial I ever did. Now, he's just sent me a picture. Just check this out. He's gone back to the same lake, deployed the same tactics, everything that he learned from me, and he bagged his personal best. I am absolutely blown away. When that picture come through, the smile on my face, oh, I just can't get over it. That's what does it for me. Uh, and that's me giving something back, you know. If anything that I can give back to this sport is just a bonus in my opinion. I mean, you know, I do these tutorials and I don't, you know, advertise them or anything like that. Uh, and there's always something going off in the background. I mean, I don't go down there with the intentions of poking the camera in people's face and I don't fish myself while I'm doing them. It's purely just for the love. 
I mean, it, there is one guy there, um, which I forgot to mention in the last video, uh, Ray. I had Ray up at uh, Huntingdon Racecourse when we was on Heron Lake. Now, Ray's, uh, you know, he's been around fishing for a long time, a lot longer than me. He's been carp fishing for the last 30 years. Uh, and he says it's got to that stage in his life where he feels a little bit intimidated to go to these day tickets because his angling was all about, you know, just finding the fish and casting to them sort of thing, you know, and placing rigs in the margins, that kind of thing. Well, he says today's angling has really changed and this wrapping up and finding spots and fishing accurately, it's way beyond him. So yes, I had a 48 hour session with him. I want fishing myself, might I add, uh, and he was lucky enough to slip the net under this one. Take a look at this now. Well, I tell you what, Ray, we've had to work hard for that, haven't we, old boy? Working hard, man. Cool. Well, right result this morning, and it was looking like we wasn't going to get one. Yeah, I was really, really worried, to be honest. I yeah. was worried, yeah. So we're going through all that process of getting the spots right, you know, making sure you find them spots, it's definitely helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's worth every penny of what I pay for his instructions, and it's such a fantastic lake. The hospitality was brilliant. You know, so I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. Thank you. And a scaly banger to go and home with. <laughs> hey. And a scaly banger to go with it. He's been saying to me all session, them scaly bangers in here, Paul. Well, oh, there yeah. you go, mate. That's one for you. Brilliant. Uh, and we'll leave it there, and I'll hand you back to this footage now. Yeah. And the real pleasing benefit of it is he really enjoyed the session and he really did soak everything up. Although he's still got, got to put it into practice, you know, he was a bit rusty, I might say that, but, you know, he's only going to benefit from that and he, he couldn't thank me enough and, you know, that's it that's just it you know everything I, I just feel so humbled especially from the support I get from you guys the messages the comments I honest that's the main reason why I do these videos I just absolutely love doing them uh, and you know getting the comments and all the messages from you guys that's what makes it all worthwhile I really do hope you enjoy what I do I tell you what I just can't emphasize the fact enough that you know just what fishing does I mean I hope this session really has illustrated the highs and lows of fishing but anyway I am waffling on and it's coming to that time now nothing happened for me this morning in fact it was really quiet out in front of me in fact if anything it's sort of looking good for a bite now I have actually seen a couple of fish drift into the area and I'm on the pressured time at the minute I shouldn't really be here right now but I am uh, and we're having a slow slow pack down so you never know but I think this is going to be the end of the video but before I go I did mention I wanted to show you my rig now this rig is a bit smashed up and you're not going to be able to see it properly but you get the, you'll get the fundamentals and as always there'll be a few close-ups for you. So this is the rig that's done me both bites. Now that there is a PB Products uh, Jungle Hook uh, and the thing that I like about this hook, the reason why I switched to this hook is because the shank on it is a lot shorter than what I was using. I was using the cord of wide gapes and the shank on them is slightly longer. Uh, and what I have done to combat that is I've made the shrink kicker a lot longer. Uh, and it's not an aggressive curve, it's basically just extending, you know, the length of the hook. So you've got, you know, the hooking prospects and the potential of a long shank hook, but yet you're fishing a short shank hook, which is is a much stronger hook pattern and especially for pulling these fish through the weed uh, and it is a bad rule on here uh, and that is a bad hook that I'm using uh, and I've also switched materials you know I started off on the Fox Camatex soft thinking that you know I'm going to be out laying over bits and pieces and that but the real crucial thing for me has been finding them clear spots and making sure that you are actually presented um, so I've switched back over to the jelly wire that's the 25 pound it's seven inches long it's not a very long rig that normally I'd like to go a lot longer but because I am punching it in holes in the weed, you know, that's the reason why I've gone down to seven inches. And not only that, most of the bites you get on here are really finicky takes. I mean, you get like a couple of bleeps on the alarm and the rod tips twitching. And believe it or not, that's actually a take on here. I've only had one absolute screamer out of all the takes that I've had on here. 
So there you go then, that's the logistics around my rig. Uh, and it's very, very simple, but it's effective and it works for me. I mean, yes, I lost a fish on it and I lost a fish last session, but you know, that happens. You can't always land everything that you hook as much as I'd love to. Um, it, it just never happens, does it? But anyway, I'm waffling on now and I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for watching and I shall be seeing you on the next one. But it's bye from me for now.